Okay, so on now to problem two, and this is just a little bit of research for you to do, and I, uh, I did a little bit myself, so I just found a random web, web page. Um, what's up there? Um, electronics cooling it is, but so here's some thermal conductivities at, at 300k, and um, that's about what is that close to 25 degrees or so. Um, the thing about a lot of these uh, physical properties like viscosity, you'll obviously have known from, from fluid flow, but also things like thermal conductivity and, and heat transfer, diffusion coefficient and mass transfer, they all tend to be temperature dependent to, to greater or lesser extents. Viscosity, for example, you'll know is quite temperature dependent and um, you see that with everyday foods like honey where you leave honey out in, in the kitchen and it gets very runny it's, it's viscosity goes down put it in the fridge and it gets very thick so to speak so uh, its viscosity goes up and it's the same with things like thermal conductivity but but they tend to be less dependent on on temperature than viscosity um so air there i've given us point is given us 0 0.026 but that's not the same as the value i gave you in the, the problem actually that's pr probably um down to temperature where I got that data, but anyway, it, it, that's entirely unimportant. But basically, I suppose the one thing I want to draw your attention to is, is if you look at, um, well, gases in general have a very low thermal conductivity. Um, that's it's kind of not surprising in a way when you think of temperature as as representing the jiggling of of atoms or, or molecules and conduction representing the effect of one layer, if you like, of jiggling atoms, spreading their jiggling to the next layer of atoms in, in some way. Um, and you can imagine that if, if the, the atoms are more tightly packed, that this tendency to spread the jiggling, if you like, is going to be stronger in, in a solid or a liquid than in, in a gas. Um, but one thing to draw your attention is, is the, the noble gases um, like argon, in particular and neon but particularly argon has a very very low thermal conductivity and if i'm not mistaken and i'm not a, a double glazed window salesman um modern windows i think are, are filled with argon and it's for that reason that the the thermal conductivity um, is is extremely low obviously you know the they have to be well constructed and no leaks and what have you so you don't want all the argon leaking out and the day you install the windows so but it's it's down to this idea of of argon uh, being having low thermal conductivity one thing i'll just touch on because it's going to come back to some of the one of the problems i i set in the additional problem set um this whole analysis assumes that you've got pure conduction but what can happen um, in, well, in any situation, but in a double glazed situation, if you think of it, you have a warm room and then you've got a, a piece of glass, then you have an air gap, another piece of glass, and then you have a cold exterior. Um, so if you think of that air gap, the, the layers of, of air in the air gap close to the warm interior of your house are are going to be warmer than the layers of air close to the, the cold outside. And we know that when when a gas is warmed, it tends to rise. So if the gap air gap is too big, in other words, if you try to get greedy by having a big air gap where you've got a very big resistance to heat transfer, what can happen is you, you set up convection currents, natural, so it's called natural convection. So the air in the air gap closest to the interior of your house starts to rise and the air closest to the cold exterior starts to fall. So you get these kind of circulating currents. Um, and what they do actually is enhance heat transfer because if you can think of a little parcel of hot air rising and then falling as it goes next to the exterior pane, it's going to give up its, its heat while it's falling. Um, in, in, while it's descending as part of this circulating pattern. So um, the analysis we've done here is, is, is simplistic in the sense that it ignores this phenomenon of, of natural convection, which is, which is a form of convection driven by 
temperature gradients essentially leading to density differences leading to actual motion of matter and that distinguishes it from what we call forced convection which is due to you either pumping a fluid or you agitating a fluid as you would in a bioreactor um, so the double glazing analysis i could make it a lot more complicated but it's uh, at this stage what i just want you to get more than anything um, is this idea of a resistance to heat transfer uh, it's not so much that i'm trying to teach you anything about double glazing i mean we are biotechnologists after all Anyway, that's all I want to say about that problem.